Okay. Uh, thank you for the kind uh, introduction. And erittäin hyvää ja kaunista huomenta kaikille. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to be here today. So, I'm uh, on, on my speech. I'm trying to now present the our adaptation or implementation of the future ready curriculum. So the extended title says that the meeting the new era in engineering education with fundamental reform and educational change. And what I'm going to present you is as you will see it was a fundamental change in the whole curriculum and the whole uh, teaching methods in, in our university or in the uh, engineering degree programs. But first, greetings from Finland. This morning we got the first snow. Can you imagine that? Up in the Lapland, first snow, something like eight centimeters. So that's from Kilpisjärvi this morning. And then a few words about Metropolia, University of Applied Sciences. So give, uh, to give you some perspective where I'm coming from and, and the size of the Metropolia. So we are a multidisciplinary University of Applied Sciences. So we are practically oriented. We offer bachelor's degree for four-year degree. And in fields of culture, business, healthcare, social services, and technology. Altogether, the amount of students is 16,500 and staff about 1,000. And we are the biggest university of applied sciences in Finland. And the amount of students in different fields is shown here. So technology, the engineering degree programs, we are more or less the half of the, the whole university. So something like 8,000 8, students altogether. And this curriculum reform now that I'm presenting, it involved approximately this, like, like about almost a half of the, the engineering degree programs. The degree programs, when the uh, reform project was initiated, the degree programs were given a freedom to select whether they want to implement it or, or how they want to implement it. And this, this implementation concerns uh, altogether four degree programs in electronics, ICT, and automation. So the project initiated 2012 and by that time I was chosen to uh, lead one of the degree programs information technology international program I was the head of the program starting at the same time when the project was initiated and the reason for that for for me being involved is that I've been one of the pioneers in Metropolia with CDIO framework. Metropolia has been member of CDIO consortium since 2008. So after that we were implementing CDIO practices in smaller scale in engineering education. We did several publications but the implementations presented the results and then based on that knowledge I was one of the one of the leaders in this this curriculum reform 
and the same goals as we heard on the first keynote speech today, uh, but we heard yesterday. The same issues to define the core competencies, to define the future ready engineer. What are the qualifications required? And then based on that, we wanted to implement, we want to reform the curriculum to support the growth of those uh, qualities. So how we did it is that starting in October 2012, organized by Confederation of Finnish Industries. We managed to get the Confederation Finnish Industries involved with this project. They organized several workshops. They invited representatives from various companies from different industry. So together with the, the academic, together with the educators and representatives from the industry. We sat down and, and we worked on the, the qualifications. And those, those were long workshops, very productive, very inspiring workshops. And as a result, there was a list of qualifications similar Again, exactly the same, same as what we have heard, heard already several occasions, and what we, we all are aware of. It is not enough anymore to be just an engineer with, uh, with uh, extreme knowledge on, on your specific, specific field of speciality. Like that, that has been the, the traditional profile of, of an engineer, at least in Finland. And 20 years ago, 25 years ago, and so it was enough. It was actually what, what was required. You all know Nokia. Every, everybody knows Nokia from Finland. It was an amazing success you know, coming from up north, such a small country, and managed to keep, I think it was something like 58% of the fo mobile phone markets. Where is Nokia now? There is no Nokia phones. And that, that took place more or less the same time when you know, industry changed. But the Finnish engineers, they were very narrow-minded and they, they were not able to, to collaborate enough. I don't know whether that's the, that's the reason, but it, it, it's probably something, something to do with that. So, next phase in our project was that in April 2013, uh, we started the project of planning the implementation of the new curriculum. And CDIO framework was the framework behind the, it was guiding the, the planning phase. And that phase involved most of the academic staff in, in engineering degree programs. Some of the staff were very happy to join, like myself, several workshops, again, internally, to work on the, the uh, concept of, of the pedagogical methods. How, how, we, want, how we want to, how, how, how can we reach the, the, the goal to, to provide these, these new qualifications? And some of the stuff, you know, they, they were not that much into it, but they still, everybody was, was participating. So everybody was aware what is happening and, and sort of they, they 
had a chance to participate, to give their input, influence on the planning. And flip learning or flip classroom was was another another pedagogical method of theory that that was involved. An increasing amount of flip classroom has been used. Lots of our mathematics teachers. It started from mathematics teachers, and now myself included. I have very few lectures. I have made lots of video material that my students can, I don't know, can enjoy, but still they can use. And the sessions, the face-to-face -face sessions that we have, it's not for me to lecturing. It's, it's for me to assist with the learning process. And eventually, now our goal here is to reach the level of flipped learning, where the, it's not only that we have the video lectures and assignments, but we have the, the student center learning space environment and the students who are self-guided and motivated to learn, learn by themselves. Of course, this is here where we started the traditional teaching. And still, I'm not saying that, that all of the traditional teaching is, is, is gone. No, no way. But we are on our way to reach this learner-centered centered learning. That is the ultimate goal. Okay, I'm going to take you back into history, 2013, a little bit. Our academic year, it's divided in four periods, each 10 weeks. So there's eight, nine weeks of active study, and then there's one, one week for, for finalizing projects and, and presentations and so on. 2013, if you were an engineering student starting 2013 in, in Metropolia, information technology degree program, especially the international program, this was your first academic year, four periods. And, oh, sorry for that. What we have there? We have mathematics. Mathematics one and two. Okay? First mathematics, fall semester, second ma mathematics, spring semester. What do we have then? We have our physics. Engineering physics one, two, three, and four. Four courses each, ten weeks at a time. Okay? Then what do we have? We have English course for, uh, uh, yes, that's engineering English, that's communication skills, and then uh, Finnish course. So three courses in, in, in language. Then we have digital, digital technology, analog electronics and circuits theory, okay? And already my hand is getting tired of, of clicking this and it just keeps on coming and it keeps on coming and more. So on the first week when the students joined the university, of course there was three days, three days of orientation prior to the first week of, of actual lectures. They had seven different courses, seven different lecturers, seven different everything, methods of assessment, like some of them required a project, some of them required, there was an uh, exam, and all together, 15 different courses. And this is, I know this by heart because this is written by me. I, I was, I was, uh, I was in, in, in charge of this curriculum 2013. 
So by the end of the fourth period in, in May, you can imagine how tired the students are. They are running from one location to another. During one day, they, they have classes in, uh, I think, um, five or four different classrooms. They, they are walking around, meeting different, different lecturers, and, and it's a big, big mess. And then, on top of that, our international students, they have just arrived to Finland. And they, they are in this, this strange country, trying to settle in, and then manage all this. So, no wonder the dropout rate was quite large that, that time. So, something needs to be done. How? Oh. Our curriculum reform, what we did. The academic year is still structured as the same. That, that comes from the higher, it comes from the ministry. But now we have four courses. Students, when they, when they start in the beginning, they have only one course. It's called orientation. They have one classroom. They come in 8.30 in the morning, and they stay in that classroom. And it's a comfortable learning environment. It's not a traditional classroom, but it's, it's a multi-form classroom, which the students then slowly they can change it according to the needs and, and requirements. And they stay there for 10 weeks, and the lecturers go to them. And there's maximum five lecturers, usually four lecturers at a time. <coughs> so completely different approach. And on the student point of view, how easy is that? You don't have to worry, like, like, do I have mathematics and physics and, and English today? You just go to your classroom, and that's it. It's 10 weeks, 15 ECTS credits each. So there's one assessment also for that. And the whole program now for four years follows the same structure. So, in, in previous keynotes, big there was a question, how many lecturers know the, the curriculum? Now, in Metropolia, everybody knows the curriculum, because it's so easy. You have the first year of studies, four courses. You have the second year of studies, four courses in your uh, for professional studies. So let's say you major in English, uh, electronics, you have your four times 15 credits, you have your wireless systems, you have sensors, you have analog electronics, and you have your measurement systems. And that's it. So the whole structure is simplified like, like, and that's that's what I'm saying when I s said that that it's a fundamental change now in the curriculum and then there is we call it study path which you can take so you have your first year and then second year which is the professional studies and then comes the optional modules so you can you can study your minor in, in any other field. And that's not restricted in, in electronics. You can go to information technology or healthcare technology. You can study your minor there. And then fourth year, you have your, your remaining optional modules and theses and, and internships. But the structure itself simplified massively.
comparing to the previous version having 15 to, to 10 courses per year. Okay, but that's not all that we did. No one is left alone. And what do I mean by that? I mean literally that nobody works alone. From the day one, the students in their group, they do most of the work in groups. So from the day one and all the way the four year, we are supporting the growth of, of teamwork or the skill, growth of skills in teamwork and communication. And same now implies to the lecturers. No lecturer has his own course anymore. Nobody. There is no such thing. Each of these 15 credit modules contains a team of lecturers, four to five lecturers, multidisciplinary team. So there's a language teacher, usually mathematics or physics teacher, and then two or three teacher from professional topics, like, like myself in, in electronics and measurement technologies. And we share the same course, let's say sensors course, 15 credits. It's, it's our and we have to work together. So we are, lecturers are forced to work together. They have to find, like the curriculum says the, the learning outcomes and, and the, the contents, but then the team of lecturers have the freedom to, to plan the implementation. And the assessment criteria is also defined in, in curriculum, but the assessment methods, for example, they have to find, uh, they have to work that in, in collaboration with the team. So by the end of the 10 weeks, there is one assessment which the team of lecturers have reached together. And that, that is another fundamental change. So nobody has his own, own courses anymore. So I'm now presenting the sensors module, the 15 credit module that we, we had last spring term. And as I said, we have the freedom, freedom to choose the implementation. So our weekly schedule looks something like this. So it's a combination, it's a hybrid of, of project-based learning combined with, with nowadays with flipped flip classroom. And still, as you can see, we have the lectures in, in mathematics. So mathematics teacher, he requires, he wants to have more traditional mathematics le lectures and exercises. We let him. But still, we work and we plan together so the topics he is teaching support our project. And then together with the two uh, professional uh, teachers in, in professional topics and language teacher, we have a weekly assignment, weekly or two weeks project, which is presented in, on Monday. And then these blue uh, slots mean that the projects are working themselves. And when the, the orange background means that there is somebody from the, from the team of teachers or two, two lecturers present, supervising, guiding the learning process. But most of the work is done by the project teams. 
And that takes time, both for for teachers, you know, because because we we have to for some reason we have to need to to teach. It's it's very difficult to stay out from the learning process. You, you like to go there and, and and start lecturing on on topics. So we we try to step back, but it doesn't mean that we are not needed. When we join these sessions, I am running all around. The, the students, they have so many questions. They have, they have always they want to present, they want to, to uh, reflect their ideas with me. So it's a, it's a constant talk between the students and the lecturers. And that's, that's now much deeper learning process that they are going, going through. So that was our weekly plan and implementation for these 10 weeks. And now the team of teachers, they, they plan it together and they have the freedom to select what, what sort of implementation fits to their, their team best. But I don't want to paint a picture which is full of, you know, too, too beautiful. But instead, as, as we Finns, we are very honest. You know, we, we like to say the things how they are. And let me say that the change is not easy. Not for the students and especially not for the educators. Because for 40 years for for a long long time and and in in universities of applied sciences started uh, 1991 ever since it's been the traditional teaching like all lecturers they've been they've been teaching their courses in traditional way for tens and tens of years and now comes this well, I'm, I'm not young anymore, but 2013, I was younger. I'm me together with, with some other, other heads of uh, degree programs. We come up with this plan that we want to change the whole thing. We want to put you together. Nobody has it, his or her own course. We did face some resistance, and, and which, which is understandable. And we didn't, we didn't push the things too much. You know, change takes time, but we initi initiated the process to change towards the uh, student-centered learning. There are studies, unfortunately, that's in, in Finnish, but the study regarding the flip learning, it's, it's a big, big thing now in, in Finland, saying that 10 or 15 percent of the learners, they, they never reach the, the level of, of self-scaffolding. Like, like they, they, don't, they don't reach that level, but 85% does, and that's, that's already, of course, we're trying to reach, get that number higher. But still, 85% learners reach, and they reach the level of self-scaffolding, self and then it reach the level of deep learning. I want to share you a story from 2014, when we started this, it was the uh, very beginning of the orientation. It was, it was a, a group of, of Finnish engineering students. And I was there to, to, to present the, the, that how, you know, how things are done here now that you started. Like, you have this orientation for 10 weeks. You, you are working in the groups, like nobody is, is, is 
working alone and, and, and you, you are all, all year you're working in a project that supports the, the uh, learning of the topic and I had this this I don't know about an hour session we were discussing about the, the whole curriculum and then the, the contents of the orientation and and, and all, all this to, to get the get the, the freshman started and when we had a break there was this this one Finnish guy he, he, he came to me he had been sitting there in the, in the back I, I noticed him he, he came to me and, and uh, uh, Mr. Eichner, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if this is my thing because I don't like humans. <laughs> I was like, oh man, this, this is going to be this is going to be a hard four, <laughs> four years. I came to engineers because I'm not I'm not very good with humans. <laughs> and that's that's the traditional way, like like that's that's the, you know, the, the traditional engineers in, in Finland, you, you lack the, the communication skills. But I encourage him, I said that, that, you know, just stick with me this year, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, trust me, it, 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 will, it will pay off. We gave him his space, we, we let him, you know, to take his time and the first year he, he managed, he, he found, found a group where to work with. He wasn't, he wasn't participa participating, you know, as much as the, the others, but he was still, still working in groups. During the second year, after the summer break, there was a completely different guy. No problem joining a team. No problem working as a productive member of a team. Amazing change. And that made me feel very, very good. So it was just not, you know, that he was, he, he couldn't have the skills. He, he just needed time to, to uh, practice them. And then he didn't, you know, no, no more complaints. He was, he was happy with the crew and he actually graduated now uh, in, in June. Then there's a study by Van Grieken saying that the, the long-standing culture of teacher isolation and individualism with a wish to preserve their individual autonomy may withhold a more collaborative culture rise in education. And that's, that is one of the key challenges that, that we have. The students, you know, when they start university, when we introduce the, our, our curriculum, they are happy. They are happy, they have to work in, in, in groups. This is what we are still working on. With some lecturers, it's easier. With some, it, it takes time. And as I've said from the beginning, it's not a sprint. It is a marathon. So the change will take place. And the change was radical. I, I agree with that. Another study kind of flip learning is that successful educational change as for teacher agency, which refers to their capability to critically evaluate the, and reconstruct the conditions of their work and professional identities. I think that's the, that's the issue, the key issue here. Like we, the change from the, the traditional lecturer expert to more as a, a mentor of, of learning process. You, you, have to, you have to be able to let go from the, the, the traditional methods and then support the learning process. So it's a change in the professional identity and requir requires change in that. 
So I want to present now at the end a few results that we reached since now it's been four years. Unfortunately, I can't present the results of staff survey because those, those are internal. I was not allowed to publish the results, but I can say you, assure you that, that the staff happiness is increasing slowly, not, not, not as, as fast as, as could be expected, but, but it's, it's in, on a positive curve. But the student like these are easy to measure and, and easy to present. For example, the number of, of students completing minimum 55 credits out of, out of 60. Previously, 2012, 13, 2014, still these are the, the students from old curriculum. Can you imagine? 33, 31, 36 percent. But one third of the students in the old curriculum managed to, to complete 55 out of 60 ECTS credits. It means that they will never graduate in the given the four years, because it's a four-year program. If on the first year only small, small part, which is understandable, you have 15 courses, and then you know some some of the, them do not fit your schedule. You let them go. You know I'll, I'll do them next year, and and so on. So that was the result. Then with the new curriculum introduced. That part here is a, a combination of the students from old and new. And then <coughs> this is now stabilizing in, in 60, 63%. So massive increase in the success in, in studies. And basically, this means that 63% that has completed the 60 credits because it's, it's 15 credit modules. So you either have 60 or 45 credits. So more than 60%. Another result, students graduating. It's a four-year program, and the fifth year is granted for free. So, and after five years, you, you have to do some special measures in order to continue. So previously, about 40% of the students managed to complete the degree in the given five years, four plus one years. Now, this year, the rate was a bit more than 70%. And that's, that's already a, a great achievement. And, and then, in addition, the student surveys also indicate that the students are happy with the learning, learning methods, they're happy with the environment, learning environment we have. So, it seems that, that the efforts that we put, they they were not in vain. Few words then of the future, what will happen. Next year we will we will make a review on the previous keynote speak. It, it, it was said that, that the curriculum should be reviewed annually or even more. We will now make a first fundamental review on the curriculum next year, and we will keep on developing and supporting the, the growth of lecturers. So we are supporting everybody to, to grow and take new pedagogical methods in, in use. 
I will con conclude here saying paljon kiitoksia. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the, the presentation. And if, if you have any questions, I'll be here all, all morning now till, till lunchtime. So don't hesitate to come to ask. I, I could keep on talking about this for <laughs> ages and ages. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ansi Ikenen. Uh, before you, I know we are running out of time, but I just have two burning questions. So it must be asked. They must be asked. <laughs> okay, um, just firstly, congratulations on the reformation that you have done. And from the positive results, we see that you know there's a lot of improvement. I'm sure we would want to learn more from your experience. So we'll catch up with you during the lunch hour. Now, um, just some core questions on engineering education, because in Malaysia, we have a body, our you know, engineering accreditation council. That's the body that accredits our program. So, and their requirements are, you know, you have to have to fulfill certain core courses. Right? For instance, for mechanical engineering, you must do thermodynamics and um, uh, statics, etc. So, uh, the first question: How do you how do you address that? Uh, do you do you have that I issues in in Finland? Secondly, uh, when you do CDIO, I'm, I'm a strong believer in CDIO. Um, I just wanted to know, because I, I saw a final year project, but I didn't see capstone projects. Uh, capstone project is also a key thing in CDIO. So can you just please very quickly touch on those two burning <laughs> questions? I, I, I'd be happy to. Yes, for the first question, we have the same accreditation in Finland. So before, like when, when the, the curriculum planning phase was done, it was presented and it was accepted by the Ministry of Education. And the, I think it was 2017, uh, 2016, the Finnish uh, academic accreditation company, they, they uh, accredited uh, uh, Metropolia and my degree program in information technology was one of the three programs that that was was checked. So so it's and and how we have addressed that is that that since I have very limited time, the each each of the the 15 ECTS credit modules contains multidisciplinary topics. So there is mathematics, there is physics, and it's been written out. In, in, in detail, in very detailed level, like which parts of so so we can we can show that that all required parts of mathematics and physics everything is in there. But the reason reason for for the the whole structure is that that now mathematics has to be part of something bigger, and gradually it will integrate with with other other topics mm. and the second question about the capstone project it's also it's not written here we call it innovation project which takes place on a third year but it's it's there it's uh, uh, 10 uh, sorry 15, 15 ECTS credits project so you, you call it innovative I think we've changed it to innovative design project isn't it yeah, now? yeah. Capstone, plus, plus yeah. It's, it's innovation project mm -hmm. and it's also targeted to be right. multidisciplinary okay, project thank you thank You're you welcome. so very much okay, ladies and gentlemen can you please give him a big round of applause please thank you and in the usual manner we would like to show our gratitude and appreciation to Mr. Ansi Ikenen and with that um, I would like to present him with a token of appreciation Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.